Ooh, won this at an online auction with another random vintage toys. Almost tossed him because he was missing legs and had no branding other than Hong Kong. Oh my goodness, what? Bought for $7 at the Goodwill, sold for $675. This next one, I absolutely love it. Hey, Bella Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, let's get started. Hey, Bolo Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, in this video, we are gonna talk about toy bolos. Um, I asked my Facebook group to share their best toy bolo. Um, this is what the uh, little screenshot I put up in my Facebook group looks like. This is what my Facebook group looks like. Go join if you're not already there. Um, and if you wanna share a bolo, that would be awesome. I will share your bolo in a video like this. Let's get started. I'm going to tell you where they got it, what they paid for it, and what it sold for. She said, I found this in a bin at a local thrift shop that raises money for hospice care. It was pre-owned condition. I paid $3.99 for it. It sold for my asking price of $110 plus shipping in two to three days. It's a Funko Five Nights at Freddy's plush, and this is what it looks like. This one comes from The Quiet Thrifter, who is a Bolo Buddies member. She is a member of my YouTube channel, which means she gets a bonus shout out in this video. She bought this new and sealed Thomas the Train um, with companion consent at a thrift store for $3. Listed it on a 10-day auction and it sold for $35. Um, buyer paid the shipping and this is what it looks like. I bought this Our Generation toy lot at the Salvation Army for $1.75 and sold it for $43.50 on eBay auction. Um, so it's uh, just a hodgepodge of like food and different pieces. So it's accessories a lot. And that one comes from, I'm going to pop it up right here, her eBay store, because she does, um, it's, it's a hard one for me to remember. Is it, it's something, oh, I can't think of it, but this is what her store looks like. I'll link it down below. But she does a lot of things like this where um, she's doing estate cleanouts and she'll put things in bulk for people to buy um, like reseller lots. And I guess is what I'm trying to say. So look for her down below. This one comes from Flippin' Hot Finds. And she said, I purchased for $5 along with another one, a boy. I got the Jesmer CPK Cabbage Patch Kid from Spain at a seasonal sale, my small town that runs a yearly sale for residents to sell their stuff. I didn't realize how rare this the Jessmer dolls are and what made this one and the boy I purchased more desirable is their original outfits as well as the dolls. Bolo for Jessmer CPK. They all have freckles. None of the other Cabbage Patch dolls from Calico have freckles. See freckles, grab them, she said. I had no idea and searched for two days to find a comp. Nothing like her out there. I priced her immensely high at, just as a gauge. Soon after listed, I was getting messages from sellers all about her and how very valuable and her very valuable outfit. I started getting offers right away and they were trying to cash in. I chatted with one really nice seller who gave me an actual info and resources. I decided I would take five hundred from the first legitimate buyer that offered, and she sold in less than two days for five hundred dollars. This is what she looks like. Okay, this one comes from Terry Mindful Recycle. This is her YouTube channel. It is incredible. Found at an estate sale, listed it, and sold it within a couple weeks. He is a character from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and is only about five inches tall. Paid less than a dollar and sold him for $110 plus shipping. Here's another one from Terry. She got this at an estate sale, paid $10 and sold it for $109.97. It's a Bratz World... Um, doll set and she has sold a bunch of these brats she did really really well this next one i absolutely love it uh keep an eye out for these wreck it ralph key slot cars or other cars from the movie got a bunch of them for five dollars and made about 500 from them <sighs> never seen them before they are incredible nick i mean they i they look like they're plastic i don't know very cool Oh my goodness, what? Bought for $7 at the Goodwill, sold for $675 with about, thir um, shipping was about $13. Danbury Mint, a farewell salute John John porcelain doll 
I don't know about you guys, but if I see a porcelain doll, most of the time I don't look it up. This makes me think I need to be looking up porcelain dolls. $7 into $675. Wow. This one comes from Mom Knows Treasures. This is her YouTube channel. She said, I paid $5.99 at a local thrift store, sold pretty fast within a couple weeks. These are big ponies, not little ones. They have a lever under their chin that makes them wink. Sold for $200. It is a vintage 1981 Hasbro romper room by Pretty Pony. Ha! Huh, I have never heard of that. That is incredible. It sold for $200. Wow. A jumbo vintage beach ball sold for $178. I think it was listed for a month or so um, at $199. Sent an offer. Bought at the Goodwill or Salvation Army for $3.99 sold for 178. It's 101 Dalmatians Jumbo Beach Ball. Those definitely do well. This one comes from Abigail's Artful Abode, and she is also a Bolo Buddies member. Thank you all for being members. She said, I haven't yet really gotten into toys, but I spotted this at a garage sale and did a quick comp on it. I paid $3 and went home and listed it the same day, and it sold the same day. I couldn't believe it. Um, it may not have been the biggest sale of the week, but for me, it was the most exciting. It's a 1999 vintage Koosh Odd Zone Purple Vortex Power Strike Nerf. It's a Nerf gun. Here's mine. Um, not a huge bolo, but a nice return. Some of these are bread and butter, and some of these are big money. The older retired figures, of course, are going to go for more. I picked these up at an estate sale. I got a small tote bag full. It was, you know, like one of those smaller totes. So I got less than a dollar in this. These are the Calico Critters. They're the Mulberry Raccoon family, and I sold those for $50. Found at the Goodwill for $8. So uh, sold for $100. It is a Build-A-Bear Workshop Pokemon Volpix Stuffed Plush. And this is what it looks like. I won this from an auction house on high bid for $11. Um, I priced it at $59.99 and took best offer of 50 plus shipping. The monkey was sold as parts only since the battery compartment was completely rusted and didn't work. It's a vintage musical jolly chimp clapping monkey battery parts or parts only. Um, Oh, this one comes from Ohio Treasure something. I'll pop up his uh, YouTube or his eBay store right here and it'll be linked down below. My son used to collect these freaky little plush. I only knew some were valuable because of him. Therefore, when I saw this one sitting at the Goodwill for 50 cents, I grabbed it. Sold one week on eBay auction for $39.50. It's Funko Five Nights of Freddy's, the Twisted Ones, uh, Theodore Plush. This one comes from Noni's Treasures House. Had to relist this several times because I kept getting, um, are they trolls? They buy but never pay and then they disappear. Yeah, I guess you could call it that. Anyway, thankfully finally sold and paid for $79.99 plus shipping. Got it at a local thrift store for $2. It's Luigi Nintendo plush. Found this at the Goodwill outlet bins, so cost of goods was less than $2. Has been listed for about a month, sold to an international buyer for full price, had a sale going on in my store for 10%. The buyer messaged me and said they have been looking for this one for years to replace their original one that is literally just in shreds now. So neat that I found something that someone else was looking for all the way in Austria. Sold for $74.70. Um, as Donatella Bottolino always says, someone is looking for this. I got this racetrack in a bundle deal along with a lot of other vintage 1960s, 1970s toys at a yard sale. It was one of my neighbors who I had never met. And when I told him I was interested in vintage toys, he said he had a lot of his old toys in his shed that he would had yet to pull out. And he let me come and take a look. Ooh, you gotta love that. I got first dibs and it was a gold mine. The racetrack box was huge and would have cost a fortune to ship, but I got a message asking if I would sell it at local pickup. I have never done that with eBay before and I agreed to, to try it. Turns out it's super easy and it worked out great. I received positive feedback immediately, sold for full asking price of 40 as part of a bundle deal. I probably had about four or five dollars into it. It's a vintage Topper Johnny Lightning racetrack set. That's what it looks like. This one comes from 1987 Ventures Tracy. 
She said, I got this for 50 cents at a yard sale, took a best offer on eBay, sold another one for almost as much a few months ago. It's a Biker's Share Bear Care Bear Celebration Collection. And she sold this for 75. Here is another one that she picked up. She said, this was part of one of our vintage toy hauls. So paid a couple dollars for it and all said and done. It works and I used video in the listing to show working, but some pieces are broken off and have to be re-glued. Very common on all Lee Max items. Took a best offer on Poshmark of $72. Paid a dollar for her at a yard sale. Sold in about a week for best offer of $50. Listed for $59.99. She is a Mycene Kennedy Barbie doll vintage uh, Y2K style and sold for $50. Bucks. That's what she looks like. Um, speaking of Poshmark. So if you guys are not selling on Poshmark, you can sell items, um, hard goods on Poshmark. Uh, like I say, board games, that was a Limax, Department 56, those bigger items, the shipping's going to be cheaper over there. Um, what I do is I start my items on eBay and then I use List Perfectly to cross post them to the other platforms. I do have a demo video down below that shows you how I do that. It is so worth every penny. Um, it's a pay by the month type thing. And I think they have a trial, but anyway, if you use my coupon code Bolo Buddies, you get 30% off your first month. That is, uh, my referral link is down below and that is my referral code. So if you use that referral code Bolo Buddies, all one word, that's 30% off your first month. Get it, use it, love it. Oh my goodness. It is amazing. I've been using it since 2019 and you are going to get more eyes on your items using list perfectly. So, uh, there's a video down below. Sorry. I am on like video six and I'm getting a little tired. It's after midnight. Um, and there a song like, I won't try, I won't sing. I won't attempt. You, I'm not gonna, I'll spare you. Okay. Um, bought in an online auction and a lot with a few vintage Barbies, paid 35 for the entire lot and sold in two days for full asking of $120. Vintage 1964 GI Joe with Foot Locker accessories, um, loose clothing and guns. That's what it looks like. Oh, won this at an online auction with another random vintage toys. Almost tossed him because he was missing legs and had no branding other than Hong Kong. But then decided to try out Google Lens and realized he is a bolo. Sold overnight for 50 even without legs. Google Lens is your best friend. It's free. It's a free app, you guys. If you're not using Google Lens, get it on your phone. I have a video that shows you how to use it. Go use it. This person made so much extra money because they used Google Lens. They were going to toss it. It's a vintage Mego style Frankenstein monster action figure doll with no legs. Paid 50 cents at a local thrift store. Took about a month to sell, but got full asking price of $44.99. It's another Care Bear. And it is uh, Care Bear's Work of Heart Bear. 12 inch, 2005. All right, sold this set of vintage 1996 Spider-Man Spider War figures. I sent out an offer for $189.95 and the buyer accepted. I got these from my dad who has been collecting for over 40 years and has finally decided to cash in on his collection. We were splitting everything 50-50. Together, we've made a combined total of about $1,000 so far and he's just getting started. These are what they look like, these figures right here. So it looks like they're new old stock. That's incredible. Also sold this full set of Slayer Funko Pops for $125. These were from my personal collection. I bought when they first came out for $12 each. This one is from Mom Knows Treasures also. This is from last year. Sold on Poshmark for $135. Got it at a yard sale for $5. Uh, these Bratz dolls. This is Talking Sasha. So $135 on Poshmark. Poshmark is great for hard goods. Cost of goods, $2, bought at a swap meet, had it listed for three months for over 200. Finally, someone sent me an offer of 100 and I took it. And this is a Rushton rubber face, a chippy chipmunk squirrel. And that one is also Mom Knows Treasure. She's on uh, Instagram as Mom Knows Treasures also. This is from Vintage Spice. She said, I bought a big lot of vintage Barbie furniture and the dollhouse it went with. This particular dollhouse caught my eye because it's the only one I played with as a kid. I was stoked when I found out that something so nostalgic to me also parted out super well. 
I paid 80 for everything, but there was a lot included plus the house to part out. Below is a screenshot of just one order of furniture. The dollhouse is the 1998 Victorian Deluxe Dream House. So right here is what she sold. Um, it's a wicker plant stand and a wicker coffee table. I think I have some of these over in my money pile. The wicker and their Barbie, I think. But anyway, she sold those for $48.74. And she got it uh, Facebook Marketplace, a local ad. I got this pony at the Goodwill for $1.49. I actually bought four ponies from this series. Turns out they're all super rare ponies made only one time in India. I had no idea what I, when I bought them. This one sold for the highest amount. It went to Iceland through eBay's global shipping program. Sold for full asking price of $600. I kept finding vintage My Little Ponies at the Goodwill for months too. These fun school ones brought the best money though. She also posted this over in the best October Bolo, which um, I'm glad I'm putting it here also because I've never heard of this. Um, I would wish that I had additional photos because um, it says Snuzzle. Vintage, ultra rare, hard to find, holy grail, MLP, My Little Pony, G1, fun school, Indian snuzzle. So it looks like it's a G1 MLP, My Little Pony. I don't know what the fun school is. Huh. The Quiet Thrifter. This is hers. Uh, bought this big Bugs Bunny at a thrift store for $3 and took a best offer of $53. He took a month to sell and this is what he looks like. So a plush 1987. This one comes from Farm Girl Scavenger Noelle, and she is a moderator and um, of this Facebook group. And she also has an amazing YouTube channel, and you can check her out here. I, uh, eBay stores and links uh, to uh, YouTube channels are all linked down below if you hear me mention someone. That means they are members of my YouTube channel. I think I paid $5 for this in a bulk purchase at an estate sale, and it sold for $75.60 all in. It's a vintage 70s Pepsi Christmas plush. <laughs> Cute, right? All right. This is Ty Pluffy's Dangles Monkey Love. Sold it for $25. Now, I did a video on Ty Pluffy's, and that is how he knew to pick this up. So I love that. He said, thanks to the information Courtney provided on a recent video, I took a more careful look at Ty Plush at a yard sale. I was able to pick up this Pluffy for 50 cents, listed on eBay and Mercari, and it took about a week and a half to sell on Mercari for 25. I love this group. Oh, thanks so much, Jerry. This one comes from Dare to Dream Big. I believe it's 1313. Uh, this is her eBay store. She purchased at a yard sale five plush for a dollar, so about 20 cents in this. Took a month to sell, sold full price for 73, and buyer paid 30 for Priority Express shipping. So I'm bringing this to the post office right now. I love finding puffalumps. Yes, puffalumps are great. Uh, Fisher Price Puffalump Nylon Plush Baby Bunny Rattle Green Yellow Vintage 1988. I think she sold that on Etsy. I picked this, or I picked a bag with about 15 three-inch Sesame Street figures for $3 at a local church thrift. This was the first to sell. It went for $15.99 plus shipping. Thanks, Courtney, for suggesting the keywords cake topper. Jerry is listening. Jerry, you rock. Thank you. He has been uh, following my channel, I think, since the very beginning. He is Jersey Shore Thrifter on eBay. Definitely check him out. This is a Super Grover Sesame Street Muppet Workshop cake topper. It's actually a little action figure, but people put them on cakes. And the last one here, I paid $1.49 for this vintage Fisher Price Cozy's Bunny at my local thrift store, and it sold for my full asking price of $54.88 plus shipping within a couple days. And this is what it looks like. I mean, it is amazing. You know, you just really never know what is going to go for big money. You got to look everything up, and that is why Google Lens is so great um, for those items that are hard to identify, especially plush when they cut the tag off and you're like, oh, I feel like this is good and quality and vintage, but I just can't figure it out. That's where Google Lens comes in really handy. All right, you guys, thank you so much to everyone that shared. Um, uh, if you want to share a bolo, head on over to my Facebook group. It is free to share. Uh, the members get a bonus shout out, but um, that's totally different. It, it's free to share. So come on over and share a bolo. Uh, let me know in the comments which one was your favorite bolo. And let me know how long you've been watching the channel. Have you been around for a while? Are you new to the channel? And if you're if it's your first video, 
hit that subscribe. And if you like this video, definitely hit that thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. How about a hat emoji or just write the word hat? Thanks for watching.